So Google apparently just announced Gemini 1.5 Pro, their brand new language model that came out of nowhere, honestly, and it has 1 million token window, which is insane. This is a demo of long context understanding, an experimental feature in our newest model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. We'll walk through a screen recording of example prompts using a 402 page PDF of the Apollo 11 transcript, which Okay, 402 pages, that's like an entire book. And it's not even third of the context window. Comes out to almost 330,000 tokens. We started by uploading the... Okay, aistudio.google.com. Apollo PDF into Google AI Studio. And asked, find three comedic moments. List quotes from this transcript and emoji. Okay, so I, I loaded this up. Czech Republic is not on the list. Nice. I mean, the model responded with three quotes, like this one from Michael Collins. I'll bet you a cup of coffee on it. Wait, how long did that take? This screen capture is sped up. That's funny <laughs> that she mentioned this screen capture is sped up because on the previous demos on Gemini, there was like a controversy when they clearly showed something sped up and they acted oh, as, is, as if it was really that fast. So, you know, Google learned their lesson. That's nice, nice to see. Processing times will vary. Okay, 30 seconds though. That's still really good, I think. To go through an entire 402 page book. I don't know about you, but I personally can't read a book in 30 seconds. The model responded with three quotes. Like this one from Michael Collins. I'll bet you a cup of coffee on it. If we go back to the transcript, we can see the model found this exact quote and extracted the comedic moment accurately. Then we tested a multimodal prompt. We gave it this drawing of a scene we were thinking of and asked, what moment is this? This is interesting because even Gemini Ultra, you know, the current model we have in Gemini Advanced, it should have been a multimodal from the, from the ground up, but it doesn't feel that way. So like Google on one hand, they're pushing all these record benchmarks, all these, you know, multimodal capabilities. But when you actually use the model, it's like super restricted and super limited. So what's the point of having the smartest model according to the benchmarks when in practice it's unusable? The model correctly identified it as Neil's first steps on the moon. Notice how we didn't explain what was happening in the drawing. So oh, wow, this is actually impressive though. Just from such a simple sketch, it was able to identify for a step on the moon. I mean, a lot of people would fail that to be honest. Simple drawings like this are a good way to test if the model can find something based on just a few abstract details. And for the last prompt, we asked the model to cite the time code of this moment in the transcript. Like all generative models, responses like this won't always be perfect. They can sometimes be a digit or two off. But let's look at the model's response here. And when we find this moment in the transcript, we can see that this time code is correct. These are just a few examples of what's possible with a context window of up to one- Oh wow! It makes the image even more impressive because, you know, there are no images in the book. So it translates, yeah, it understood the image and then referenced, probably based on some like vector search, the entire book, which is like 400 pages. Man, this is crazy. One million multimodal tokens in Gemini 1.5. By the way, if you don't know how tokens work, actually, we can look into the advanced chat GPT guide I just finished. And I had a slide where I explained this right here. AI models, la large language models, they don't actually write in words, they write in tokens. Now, this all depends on what tokenizer you use. Uh, OpenAI has their own propri proprietary one, which is called Tick Token. For that, one token is roughly three quarters of a word. So 100 tokens is roughly 75 words. Again, I'm not sure which one Google uses. You can see the context window comparison. GPT-4 Turbo, which is the latest and greatest model from OpenAI, has 128,000 token context window in the API, which is, has been state of the art for like three months since the dev day, right? And 32K inside of ChatGPT. Well, Gemini Pro 1.5 has 1 million multimodal tokens. By the way, as I mentioned, this is my advanced ChatGPT tutorial, which I finished just today. So if you want to access to that, it's gonna be in my community, first link in the description. Okay, let's look at the second video. Multimodal prompting with a 44 minute movie. This is a demo of long context understanding, an experimental feature in our newest model, Gemini 1.5 Pro. Okay, 696, 700,000 tokens. Okay, so 1 million tokens, it's basically one hour of video. Okay, that's good to understand. 
We'll walk through a screen recording of example prompts using a 44-minute Buster Keaton film, which- Ooh, Buster Keaton, man, I love Buster Keaton. He's one of the three, you know, silent actors. Such a legend, man. Comes out to over 600,000 tokens. In Google AI Studio, we uploaded the video and asked, find the moment when a piece of paper is removed from the person's pocket and tell me some key information on it with the time code. This screen capture is sped up, and this timer shows exactly how long it took to process each prompt. And keep in mind that processing times will vary. Okay, so less than 60 seconds to less than 60 seconds to watch a 44 minute movie. Imagine playing a YouTube video on 44x. I mean, we can only do up to 2x obviously. The model gave us this response. Explain Wait, it's like it's all based on text. So it kind of has to analyze every single frame or maybe like not every single one, but maybe it's skipping through like every 10 frames or whatever that the piece of paper is a pawn ticket from Goldman and Company pawnbrokers with the date and cost. And it gave us this time code 1201. When we pulled up that time code, we found it was correct. The model had found the exact moment the piece of paper is removed from the person's pocket and it extracted text accurately. See, the thing is with these Google demos, like they're always super impressive. But then, you know, we get Gemini Advanced and the pro and, or like Bard and the products and they're like just straight up disappointing thing of a scene we were thinking of and asked what is the time code when this happens this is an example of a multimodal prompt where we combine text and image in our input the model returned this time code 1534 we pulled that up and found that it was the correct scene like all generative wow again such a simple drawing gives the result models, responses vary and won't always be perfect. But notice how we didn't have to explain what was happening in the drawing. Simple drawings like this are a good way to test if the model can find something based on just a few abstract details, like it did here. These are just a couple examples of what's possible with a context window of up to 1 million multimodal tokens in That's Gemini 1.5 Pro. Okay, learn more at deepmind.google slash Gemini. Okay, we're going to check that out. Gemini 1.5. Ooh, introducing Gemini 1.5. Our next generation model. Can we see some benchmarks? Oh, okay. So only Pro has 1.5. That's interesting. Let's look at the technical paper. Okay, so Pro 1.5 Pro is better on text, but worse on vision and audio. Shouldn't, shouldn't it be different? Oh my god, this, go, this is going to be huge for programming. An entire code base with like 700,000 tokens. For, okay, 1,300 pages long PDF. And the AI can identify that it's on page 1,099. This is insane, actually. This figure presents the audio version of the needle in a haystack experiment comparing Gemini 1.5 Pro and a combination of Whisper and GPT-4 Turbo. In this setting, the needle is a short segment of audio that is inserted within a very large audio segment. Okay, so I guess this is basically Google flexing the context window. Okay, this is basically just a visualized uh, difference between the context window. It kind of maybe goes down a bit. I don't know if you can see it, but it feels like it's going down, but overall it's quite stable. Okay, now we're getting to typical benchmarks like MLU Hello Swag. And it's comparing only to other Gemini models. But I would like to see GPT-4. It's kind of sketchy. Because for this, I think GPT-4 would actually perform really well. Because the context window isn't as needed here. But yeah, let's get back to the last video. We'll walk through some example prompts using the 3JS... 100,000 lines of code. Okay, that's insane example code, which comes out to over 800,000 tokens. We extracted the code for all of the 3JS examples and put it together into this text file, which we brought into Google AI Studio over here. We asked the model to find three examples for learning about character animation. The model looked across hundreds of examples and picked out these three, one about blending skeletal animations, one about poses, and one about morph targets for facial animations. No, this time they didn't show the timer, which makes me think it was really slow. All good choices based on our prompt. In this test, the model took around 60 seconds to respond to each of these prompts. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it was 60 seconds. 
which is, to be honest, very good. But keep in mind that latency times might be higher or lower, as this is an experimental feature we're optimizing. I mean, that's true because nobody is, you know, they can allocate as much compute power as they want. Next, we asked, what controls the animations on the littlest Tokyo demo? As you can see here, the model was able to find that demo, and it explained that the animations are embedded within the GLTF model. Next, we wanted to see if it could customize this code for us, so we asked, show me some code to add a slider to control the speed of the animation. Use that kind of GUI the other demos have. OK, so this is where multimodal really kicks in, and the context window especially, because it can keep track of so much stuff at once. This is what it looked like before on the original 3JS site. And here's the modified version. It's the same scene, but it added this little slider to speed up, slow down, or even stop the animation on the fly. I mean, in 60 seconds, I mean, he said 60 seconds for each of the prompts, so two minutes, I guess. Like, this could save you hours. Where the other demos have set a parameter called animation speed and wired it up to the mixer in the scene. Like all generative models, responses aren't always perfect. This makes me think, like, is Google trying to compete with GitHub Copilot? if they're going so hard on code and context windows. We'll see if Google remains being scared. If Google released everything they had internally, they would be dominating, but they, they're just so scared, they're so timid. It's painful to see. There's actually not an init function in this demo like there is in most of the others. However, the code it gave us did exactly what we wanted. Next, we tried a multimodal input by giving it a screenshot of one of the demos. We didn't tell it anything about this screenshot and just asked where we could find the code for this demo, seen over here. As you can see, the model was able to look through the hundreds of demos and find the one that matched the image. Next, we asked the model to make a change to the scene, asking, how can I modify the code to make the terrain flatter? The model was able to zero in on one particular function called generate height and showed us the exact line to tweak. This might be either like not that impressive or very impressive. Because like if it's named if if it's named generate height, all the current AI models could be able to do that. Below the code, it clearly explained how the change works. Over here in the updated version, you can see that the terrain is indeed flatter, just like we asked. We tried one more code modification task using this 3D text demo over here. We asked, "I'm looking at the text geometry demo, and I want to make a few tweaks. How can I change the text to say goldfish and make the mesh materials look really shiny and metallic?" You can see the model identified the correct demo and showed the precise lines in it that need to be tweaked. Further down, it explained these material properties, metalness and roughness, and how to change them to get a shiny effect. Not bad. You can see that it definitely pulled off the task, and the text looks a lot shinier now. Once this is available to the public, you don't even have to know anything about programming. You just need to know what you want to build. Like, you, you can get a long way with the current tools, obviously, you know, just ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot can assist you tremendously, but man. What's possible with a context window of up to 1 million multimodal tokens in Gemini 1.5 Pro? Okay, so Google, out of nowhere, just hit us with the biggest context window ever seen. We need more benchmarks against GPT-4 Turbo, and we need actual, like, practical tests, because... Honestly, I'm starting to be tired of benchmarks because like, if they are going to make the model super limited when it's actually in the tools, then benchmarks don't really matter. So if you want me to make an advanced tutorial on Gemini Advanced, then subscribe and comment below.